FPV, there is a very real convergence going on between the sub 250 gram Cine FPV freestyle quads and videography drones like this Mavic uh, Pro 2. Uh, everyone is wondering what could dethrone DJI in the consumer space. And I think it's gonna be these 250 gram or sub 250 gram hybrid Cine FPV quads. Uh, a lot of, uh, even the US, you know, they're looking at less than 250 grams as being the, the magic uh, weight where um, the restrictions will be less. So there's this real race in making, you know, FPV quads smaller and smaller and putting better and better cameras on them. And uh, if we're really honest with ourselves, do you really need obstacle avoidance? Do you really need smart shots? Do you really need GPS? Do you need flow sensors, barometer? And I would argue even the sacred gimbal, you don't really even need that. Um, with new camera technology, a good example is a Hero 7 with in-camera stabilization. You know, even the gimbal potentially could be replaced with in-camera stabilization. So with that, um, you know, I was interested in this beta FPV Beta 85X HD. So I went ahead and purchased this. So I'm gonna be doing a review on this and I'll give you my impressions on how this thing flies. And is it getting closer? I know it's, it's a long ways away from a Mavic Pro 2, but the point being is, is this something that uh, eventually, you know, as, as technology progresses in the next couple of years, that, you know, is lightweight, you know, if you're just taking uh, videos of your family, maybe this is something that you would consider versus, you know, a $1,200, you know, a DJI consumer space drone. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a review of this uh, Beta 85X HD. So let's go ahead and see what you get in the box. Okay. Uh, this is what you get. Here is the 85X. Looks like they have uh, a different canopy on this versus the standard edition. Uh, so, looks like I'm going to have to attach the LED here into the frame. You get... Uh, some props. You get a Cadex Turtle control board here. And uh, that's about it. Um, also, um, I did get this as well. It was attached to the top of the package. It looks like it's the Cadex uh, control wire that uh, attaches to this board here to control the settings in the in the camera. So let's quickly go through the specs. The dry weight is approximately 58 grams. The motors are 1105 6000 kV motors. The props are Avan 2 inch 4 bladed props. The camera is a Cadex Turtle V2. Uh, the receiver that I ordered is the FR Sky XM Plus. The frame is 85 millimeter uh, motor post to motor post. Uh, the antenna that came with it is the AXE Micro. Uh, the battery strap supposedly fits 3S to 4S batteries. Um, I have a 550 ma. 4S battery that I'm going to be trying out. Uh, the flight controller is a um, SM, STM32 F4 O5 processor. Uh, the mounts are, it's a 26 millimeter by 26 millimeter stack. Uh, it has uh, a whoop mounting pattern. Uh, this does support beta flight firmware. It is the Omnibus F4 SD version. Uh, it does support OSD. It does have a smart audio port 
that you can use to control the VTX via your radio. So I'll try that out. Uh, the ESC uh, is BL Heli 32. Uh, the um, ESC support D shot 600 and D shot 1200, and the input voltage is from 2S to 4S. Uh, I think the uh, question is is a 2S battery going to be held in with uh, the strap that we have here? So uh, that's why I think they're recommending a 3S to, to, to 4S. The continuous current is 16 amps for the SC with a peak current of 25 amps and uh, the uh, camera VTX is uh, selectable from 25 milliwatt to 200 milliwatt you can adjust that which adjust that which is nice for the VTX um, it does support uh, smart audio uh, which you can control it says here via the radio so we'll uh, try that out and then um, it does support 48 channels. In my particular version, uh, it's NTSC and the field of view is uh, 120 degrees for the HD footage and uh, 100 degrees it's, it looks like for um, your FPV feed, but I'll check that out. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, configure things in beta flight and uh, get some flight footage. So just a quick tip here, when you're installing the uh, back lead, uh, you notice these slots, uh, you need to hook it in on the bottom here. These slots at the bottom actually, uh, that's what uh, holds in the lead. This is how I set up the receiver antenna for diversity. I know some people run them along the outside edge of the, the whoop frame. Um, I tend to like it uh, sticking up in the air a little more um, to get better reception. So I just added some heat shrink tubing. I went ahead and added this, this tie wrap here to hold the XT30 connector in place so it doesn't get tore off in a crash. Um, it doesn't uh, interfere with the, the props. I, I tested that out. So uh, for me, that was a, a good, good setup. And uh, so we'll see how well this holds together. And also the lead board here, as you can see, this is what it looks like when it's installed properly.
So here are my final thoughts on the Beta 85X HD. And my emotional response is, I love this Cine Whoop. Uh, for my type of flying, which is mainly in parks and around the house, I give the Beta 85X HD two thumbs up. I mean, there's some purchases you're kind of iffy about, but uh, this one, um, I, am, I feel really good about it. To be honest, I was a little nervous when I pre-ordered the Beta 85X HD because the early prototype reviewers were showing a lot of jello with the standard version. But I think the video quality is great for an HD whoop. I mean, it definitely ticks off the box if you're wanting a park flyer that takes HD video. Is it going to replace my Mavic Pro 2? No, but I guarantee it will be seeing a lot more flight time than my Mavic, you know, because I like flying at lunchtime. So uh, the pros, it has great video for a Cine Whoop. I mean, I was not seeing, the, the, the jello in it was very, very minimal. When you looked at the uh, prototypes um, it, in the uh, FPV view, it was pretty jello -y. This actually, when you can see it, the videos that I posted were untouched, ungraded, just as is as it came off the uh, SD card. Um, the other thing I like about it as a pro, it can use a bunch of different battery types. You know, here's a here's a 2S battery that I was using um, to begin with. Then I moved up to uh, this 3S battery, and then finally this GNB 4S 520 battery. So um, the good news is because it has this um, strap on it, you can use batteries with different sizes and shapes. So I think that's a definite definite pro. Uh, the other thing is this thing flies great out of the out of the box. I didn't mess with the PIDs at all. I mean, I put my rates on, but other than that, it just flew great. I, unlike other quads where you have to mess with them, I, Beta FPV spent a lot of time tuning this, and I think they did an outstanding job because I was flying 2S all the way up to 4S, and, uh, you know, I thought it flew well on all three battery types. Now, of course, you're not going to be doing acro, with uh, this 2S battery, but if you're just a beginner and you just want to fly real slow, um, getting HD video, uh, it worked out great. Uh, so as far as uh, flight time, I was getting, uh, and this was cold, again, I was uh, flying in conditions that were like 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, these this is a brand new battery, and I was getting close to uh, about four minutes of flight time, even doing acro um, mixed in with just uh, smooth flying. So overall, um, you know, the, the, this actually, you know, is something that I definitely will be using when I park fly. The other thing that I really liked about it is the frame is very, very durable. Beta FPV does a really good job with, with their frames. I was doing a power loop and I, you know, did pull up soon enough because I was getting a feel for the quad and uh, hit the ground pretty hard and the frames held up really well, even in the, you know, 20 degree Fahrenheit weather. Um, the other thing I like about it is uh, it's fairly quiet. Um, I think, uh, you know, as a park flyer, people aren't going to be noticing this one much at all. So that's definitely a pro. So a minor, some minor cons would be, I wish it had a beeper. I mean, I can add that. Uh, the other thing um, that could be improved, there's not much uh, camera angle adjustment. The other thing is I wish the canopy, I mean, it does protect the, the uh, camera lens, but um, it does, uh, I could see where, because the lens is so big, as compared to the canopy, a little concerned about it getting getting uh, broken, but uh, so that would be a con. Uh, let's see, the other thing, uh, boy, I uh, really don't have anything else that I can think of that I didn't like about it, and the things that I just mentioned are minor, minor nits. Oh, I guess the other thing would be if they could, uh, uh, you know, it would have been nice if I would have had telemetry uh, had a, an option to get an RXSR with telemetry. I would have preferred that versus the XM Plus. So other than that, you know, it's just definite two thumbs up. So overall, 
uh, you can't go wrong with this one, I don't think, in my opinion. If you're into park flying and you want something that uh, takes good HD video, that's a lightweight, you know, Cine Whoops uh, type quad, definitely give this thumbs up. And so with that, thanks for watching.